This video is for everyone switching from Windows to Mac. I've made a video like this one before that seemed to be kind of popular, so I decided to make a follow up with this one with more tips and tricks for newbies on a Mac. Now I'm Lucas from Apple Fox, let's begin and let's get started. Screenshots do not have to be pain in the butt anymore. I certainly didn't know this when I first switched. It sucks on Windows, and I still think that it's a lot better on uh, the Mac. Like, I remember, I'm pretty sure it doesn't work the way right now, I haven't used Windows computer in a while, but I used to taking a screenshot, like clicking on the print screen button, then opening up Windows Paint and pasting the photo there, and then exporting it, which is something unbelievable. And on Mac, there is a specific app for this and many shortcuts that you can use to really make things fast. So let's take a look at the screenshots app. If you open it up, you have a couple of options at the bottom. So you can uh, capture the entire screen. You can only capture a specific window or you have like a selected area that you want to save from the entire desktop, from the entire screen. So that's another option you have or you have the option to screen record, which is also something which may come in handy, but for this you can use QuickTime as well, which also comes with your Mac, it's already pre-installed, so no worries there. But a lot of times it's even faster when you use the keyboard shortcuts, which macOS is full of, and they're extremely useful, so I would just recommend you learning to use them every day, they're gonna save you so much time. But for a screenshot, you have to press Command, Shift, and 3. That's gonna capture the entire screen. To take a screenshot of just a selected area, make sure to click on Command, Shift, and 4. You will have the option to select anything you would want. And if you are already in this state, you do this shortcut. And if you click on a space bar, you can click on any window which is right now visible on your home screen. And you can just capture that specific window. That's pretty useful, I guess. Common Shift 5 is another gesture that you can use and that one has a different purpose because if you perform this, you have a window that you can actually move around and resize. Meaning that you don't take the screenshot immediately, but you have a selected area and you can rearrange your icons and windows to make sure you only show up or make sure to put everything in the selected area what you want and you have time for that. So. This is another option for you. And for those of you who updated to Mac with touch bar, if you have a MacBook which has a touch bar instead of the function keys at the top, what you can do is to go and click on Command, Shift and 6, which is going to capture the screenshot and the actual state of the touch bar. This is probably the least useful option out of these, but yeah, just know about it. You can, of course, specify where the location of the screenshot should be and where they should be saved in the screenshot app. So there are plenty of options. And as you can see, that's why my uh, home screen looks really messy because thing in screenshots is just really something I got used to really quickly, I guess. Okay, I'm trying to get this video to as many people as possible that are switching from Windows to Mac. So if you want to help me along the way, and I would greatly appreciate it, what you can do is to click on the like button, click on the thumbs up to support this video on YouTube and to make it go up in YouTube's eyes. You can also look at the video before, that one is actually a little older, I go too fast in it, but still, there are some great tips that I think you would benefit from. And also remember to subscribe if you're new so you don't miss videos like these. And spacebar to preview everything. This is another tip I have for you. So whenever you are in the finder in the uh, file browser app on MacBook, you can just open every kind of uh, file up or just highlight it. And just by clicking on the spacebar, it's going to be open up for you. And it doesn't matter if it's a video, if it's a photo, if it's a zip, if it's an app, it will try to do its best and try to give you at least some additional information about the thing that you highlighted. 
this is especially useful if you just don't want to change the view of the icons like to switch to the grid which is also pretty easy to do on Mac but if you just want to glance at what it is before or without opening up the actual file this is a great thing and also what's great about it is that it works when you're trying to upload anything if you're trying to make an upload to YouTube or to Google Drive and or if you want to just uh, send the attachment uh, through Gmail. If you're uploading the photo there, if uh, in the window already, which is here to select the things you want to upload, you can again click on the space bar to preview what's inside it. So you are sure that you're not sending some stuff you wouldn't like to send and you're just uh, uploading the, the photo, the video, whatever. So you have like more information about it. Okay, the next thing is a little subtle, but it just works so well and so across the board that it just can be seen everywhere. And I'm talking about the highlight colors. There are basic colors in the system preferences if you open it up and go to uh, the general section, which is the first one right there. You have accent color. I don't really use that a lot, but here you can actually see the highlight color underneath this. So here you have a couple of basic colors, which uh, should work the best for you. But here at the bottom, you have the other section. If you click on this, you have multiple color wheels and color panels. And it's just amazing how many colors you can actually pick from. So there are plenty of things. I mean, I would say pretty much all of the colors here. So I guess there isn't anything to worry about here. It's pretty useful and yeah, it just makes it very interesting. Some people like to have it on the black. That's kind of weird in my opinion, but works. So no problem there. So you know how you can click on the function keys to raise the volume, for example. But if you, for example, just hold down to shift while clicking on the volume keys, then you're going to hear a sound like a click, which will be played at the volume, which is currently set. So it gives you like more information on how loud the MacBook is actually set to be at the moment. So you don't have to play like a song or to play a sound to make sure to know which volume the iPhone or I mean the MacBook is set to. This is pretty useful, not very known. You're not going to be using this every day, but yeah, just know that it gives you this kind of clicks. And the next step is hot corners. I've talked about it a lot in one of my videos. And as you know, when I make a specific video just about one topic, it's probably pretty important or I have a strong opinion on this. And hot corners are one of those things. You can use it for many things. And let me explain to you what actually this thing means. So you can imagine that your desktop or the screen is apparently rectangle and it has four corners. And the mouse that you have, if you quickly move it to any of the corners, you can trigger different and specific actions with this. So, for example, I can set it to be that if I move my uh, cursor or the mouse to the left, upper left corner, I can make the MacBook shut down or go to sleep, which can be very useful. Or I can uh, set the thing to the opposite corner. So if I go to the upper right corner, I can trigger the mission control or to show all of the open apps, all of the windows which are on my desktop or to get it like an extended view of my uh, windows from one specific app. I think this is a very useful. So let me show you how you can set it up. You go apparently to the system preferences and here you have mission control. And here at the little bottom, actually in the corner, it's called hot corners and here you can already see we have four corners and you can choose from these things so you can show uh, the desktop application windows dashboard notification center launchpad which is like all of the apps apparently you have other gestures for it like three finger swipe up or pinching on the trackpad to get to the launchpad but this is a different way of triggering these actions 
For example, if you want to connect the mouse to your Mac and you can't use the gestures anymore, you can just turn on these hot corners and it's just going to make it very nicely here and it's just going to get the job done. So let me just click on the lock screen, hit OK. And if I go like this, you can see we are on the lock screen. It's just as simple as that. And I think it's very nice that there are plenty of options like these and not many people are aware of this. And that's why I'm making this video. If you are enjoying this kind of stuff, I want to say that it would really help me if you clicked on the subscribe button as well as on the, the like button. Clicking on subscribe will definitely benefit you first because you don't miss future videos and future updates. You can take a look at my other content. I think you would enjoy it. But for now, I want to say thank you so much for watching and for your support. If you want to see more videos like this one, like I said, make sure to stay tuned for more content. Stay safe, guys, and see you guys later.